I know that the journey of making new friends is scary and uncomfortable as a person who is like deeply averse to social interaction. I can assure you that like I see you, you are very much valid. This is not, again, this is not a thing to be ashamed of or embarrassed of. Okay, hi everybody. Thanks for coming back if you've been here before or hi, welcome if you're new. My name is Mickey, I'm a therapist and we talk about therapy things on this channel. And today we are talking about everybody's favorite subject, which is how the fuck are you supposed to make friends as a grown up? I get this question all the time. I help people work through this issue in therapy all the time. It's a source of a lot of discussion and also a lot of pain. So I wanna talk about this. I do have some actual practical tips for y'all about how to make friends, how to develop new friendships, etc., etc. This is actually gonna be a two-part situation because I have tips for separate things about like, first of all, where are you meant to find friends? How do you like actually do the thing? And also the tips about like, like what specifically interpersonally are you meant to do? So we're breaking this into two parts more so of like where to find friends and then how to make the friends. I hope that this is helpful to you guys. Uh, if you do like this, also uh, like the video, that helps a lot. Um, and if you wanna see more content from me, in case you didn't know, we stream every Friday, uh, we have podcasts every Thursday, and then obviously these videos come out on Saturdays. So yeah. Without further ado, let's get into the tips. Okay, tip number one um, might be a little bit annoying to you, but it is important to mention because uh, we can explore deepening our current friendships. Um, I know that this is going to be an eye roll for a lot of you, but hear me out. Um, first and foremost, uh, for those of you who are working with a limited social <laughs> battery, um, being aware of what your friend circle already looks like and exploring how can I deepen those friendships. And also, is there a way to expand on the friend circle that I already have is a super useful strategy. Oftentimes we do this where we tell ourselves like sure have these friends but they're not real friends and like why they could be right is there something that you can address is there a, a change in the way that we interact with them that could make those friendships more like real friends more deep friendships more meaningful friendships um and if so that might be something to explore. Along with this, I wanna encourage people to reach out to the friends that you already have, especially if they are very established, deep, intimate friendships and practice uh, expanding into those circles, right? I can guarantee you that those friends that you have also have like another sort of outside friend group um, that you maybe sort of know, um, or you know maybe you don't know them at all. And those are great connections because ideally, if they're friends with somebody that you're friends with, you probably have some stuff in common. And so a nice, group hang party situation can be a great way to meet those people, again, deepen those connection, connections um, and kind of get a foot in, um, in a way that feels a little bit less vulnerable, a little bit less scary. Tip number two is to stop saying no to shit. I know that especially as an introvert, listen, I'm the last person to cast judgment. I say no to shit all the time because I have a limited social battery and I really don't like going to do stuff. However, if you want to develop new friendships, if you want to find new friends, it will require you to be vulnerable. And sometimes that means saying yes to stuff that is a little scary or that you don't want to do or um, accepting invitations for stuff that you're like, I'm only gonna know one person here, so I don't wanna go, right? The unfortunate answer with how do I make more friends is that oftentimes it requires you to go outside of your comfort zone, and this can very much be one of those things. If you find yourself in a situation with an opportunity to go to a happy hour, a trivia night, a birthday party, a get together, um, and you feel that hesitation, I want to challenge you, invite you <laughs> to say yes to the thing, to be brave, and to give yourself permission to show up imperfectly there, um, because ultimately, go going, being uh, seen, having the opportunity to meet new people is still a victory and can very much be a vehicle for meeting new people and making new friendships. Along with this also, <laughs> this video is mostly for people who are introverts, but along with this, I want to encourage you, if you do say yes to the thing and you do go, to not do the thing where you only <laughs> socialize with this person's pets. Again, as a person who does this a lot, uh, it's it's relatable, right? This is fair, this is like a thing that makes sense, um, but also, part part of uh, being vulnerable, of actually making friends and, and putting yourself out there is doing the uncomfortable thing of trying to make small talk, trying to get to know people rather than sort of slinking away and <laughs> hiding um, with the pets or with the people that you already know, especially. Which is a great dovetail for thing number three, uh, seek out new things. This can look like a whole bunch of different things. Um, I'm gonna give you some concrete examples here in a hot second, but the operative word <laughs> with this is to seek out new things alone. It is so incredibly common for folks to try new things, to go to a club, an activity, a meetup, et cetera, et cetera, um, but you bring um, like an emotional support person with you. Again, this is not shameful, this is not bad, lots of people do this, however, 
the problem that a lot of folks experience with trying to make new friends. Oftentimes I get the feedback from people. I feel like everybody else already has friends. Everybody has their core group of people. And like, I don't know how to like break into that group. Like it feels very awkward. It's very unapproachable to be like, hey, can I sit with you guys while you guys are all like in your weird little click thing? It's very awkward and uncomfortable. And so when we do this, where we bring our support people with us to new events or to new things, um, from the outside, we can look like those people. And that limits our ability to, first of all, be approached by new people, um, but also to um, feel the need to reach out to new people and to talk to new people. Um, there is very much a time and a place for going to new events and things with your actual friends that you already have, right? But especially in the pursuit of wanting to meet new people, again, this will require some vulnerability in regards to going to new things um, and being brave and, and choosing to do it alone so that you can approach new people and so that you can appear from the outside more approachable. I also, I just wanna pause here to be super clear, again, because I get the feedback a lot of like, I feel like everybody else has this core group of friends and like, I feel like I'm the only person who doesn't have friends. This is like so incredibly common. This is like one of the number one questions that therapists answer. I can assure you that there are so many other people, especially in a like post COVID world. There are so many people who feel isolated, who feel like they can't make friends as an adult. And I do also just wanna validate how difficult this is, especially if you have a job that doesn't promote uh, interaction with other coworkers. Um, and like after having left college and things like that, when we um, are not as immersed in these one-on-one -on -one social environments, it can become a lot more difficult to make friends. And sometimes it puts us in the situation then where we have to go out to explicitly seek new friendships. And again, this is a thing that like, everybody is doing, I can assure you, you are not the only person. And also this is not embarrassing. This is not shameful. This is not bad. First of all, everybody can benefit from new friendships. But second of all, I can assure you, lots of people feel like they haven't found their people yet. And so in the same way that you're probably seeking friendships, so are they. And so I just, I want to encourage everybody to unlearn the attitude of shame that we have around this. We're going to talk about this in the other video. I'll put that up here if it's up by the time this goes up, but this is not embarrassing. This is not bad. Um, and I can assure you there are lots of other people who are looking probably for you, so. In terms of concrete examples for this, um, I wanted to give a couple. This can look like attending uh, classes or trainings or clubs, you know, like a local book club, a local event, a trivia night, a pottery class, um, et cetera, et cetera. Basically, if there's a hobby that you have an interest in, there's probably a group uh, class or like connection oriented event for that thing. There are lots of wonderful digital supports um, for finding things to do. You can quite literally just Google um, meeting new friends and then your city name and there will be some stuff that pops up. But this can also look like saying hi to your neighbor actually and talking to them, right? Actually visiting with the people that you see on a regular basis, especially if you are like a regular at a coffee shop or you take your dog to the dog park at the same time every day, actually talking to those people that you consistently see, asking some, you know, opener questions. We're going to talk more about how to do that in the other video. Those are all useful vehicles for, again, creating and, and like developing those new friendships. Which brings us to thing number four, which is to utilize digital supports. I think especially in this day and age, it's important to validate that online community is a valid form of community and does sometimes turn into like IRL friendships, right? Um, there are lots of things like this. Um, I have a list of them. Um, Discord, obviously. Um, social media, if you're using it with intention, with authenticity, with honesty. There's an actual website called meetup.com that has like local events. I wanna encourage everybody to practice an attitude of caution, especially if you are a person who, you know, let's be clear, has been on like the receiving end of like misogyny and patriarchy and things like that. Please be careful. But there are also apps like this. Bumble BFF is the one that comes to mind, but I have seen people also just use generic ass dating apps. Um, and just be clear in their profile that like I'm seeking friends. There are lots of really valid digital means of seeking connection and friendships and community. And again, I wanna encourage people to honor this as a real form of friendship, um, but also to recognize that this can very much lead to uh, connections in your local area, right? Um, there are digital supports that are like geographically limited, right? There are probably Discord servers for like the city that you live in that has like a particular hobby or interest, right? Again, please practice an attitude of caution. It's very important to be careful on the internet. I think that goes without saying, but still, uh, these are still very valid means of finding your people, of developing those friendships and like seeking out people who have uh, things in common with you. Thing number five is to remember that consistency matters. We talked about this a little bit, um, but again, especially if you are a person who is working on a limited social battery, there's lots of tips on the internet about how like, um, you know, just get off your phone when you're in public and talk to the people in line next to you at like the checkout at the grocery store or like, 
I don't know, at the coffee shop that you just so happen to be at, right? Um, and these can be useful vehicles, especially for people who just find it easy to talk to other people, right? However, again, if you're working with a limited social battery, and especially if you're dipping your toes into this water for the first time, um, I wanna encourage people to practice channeling your energy into means that are more likely to be successful. Um, this is why I mentioned things um, like a class that you attend weekly, right? Or like a volunteering opportunity that you go to consistently on the same day every month. These environments are more likely to have repeated uh, run-ins with the same people. And for a lot of folks, it can feel a lot more approachable to be like, hey, I see you here all the time, right? Like, I also love cats. That's why I'm volunteering at the cat shelter. Those kind of conversations are a lot easier to spark up when you see someone, you know, again, same day every month, you guys are volunteering at the cat shelter together or like what have you. Recognize that, like practice immersing yourself in those environments, first of all, um, but then also um, practice channeling your energy into those pursuits as opposed to, maybe not opposed to, but like uh, as a first effort, like a first line effort, um, instead of just trying to spark up conversations with random strangers. We have talked briefly on the channel before about actual concrete places um, for folks to find and meet people who share your interests, but I do want to encourage people to um, take the tack of looking or, or like evaluating in your life what are uh, interests, hobbies, particular areas of concentration that you have, and then um, looking at opportunities to develop community around that particular thing, right? It's a universal truth that we're more <laughs> likely to be friends with people that we have shit in common with. Um, and so especially if you are uh, branching out for the first time, looking for, again, like a class, a club, a meetup, a trivia night, a volunteering opportunity, um, uh, that's a, again, a consistent thing around that particular topic, you're very much going to increase your odds of first of all, running into the same people, um, but second of all, having an easier time making conversation with these people, not doing the drudgery of like, do we have anything in common, right? Like you already know, you already have a thing to talk about and that's a great jumping off place. I know that the journey of making new friends is scary and uncomfortable as a person who is like deeply averse to social interaction. <laughs> I can assure you that like, I see you, you are very much valid. This is not, again, this is not a thing to be ashamed of or embarrassed of. Because again, I just, I want to be super clear. The reason that I'm making this video is A, because I get a lot of questions about it, um, but B, because this is very much the topic of a lot of folks' uh, frustration in therapy. So um, I really want to validate this. And I also want to encourage people to be brave. Um, we're going to talk more in uh, part two of like how to go about this. And so we're going to flesh that out more there. I will exercise self-restraint. Uh, <laughs> but again, I just want to encourage people to remember, to remind yourself, especially in these moments where you're feeling insecure, insecure, you're feeling like, fuck, this is so embarrassing that I'm trying to like make friends as a grown up that like literally everybody else is doing this. I promise you, I have done this. My own friends have done this. Um, some of the friendships that I have now are people that I have sought out through these means. Um, so please know again, that this is very human. This is very normal. And also we all need friends. We all need connection. Community is such an integral part of being a human being and like feeling okay in the world. So uh, big love to you. If you're working on finding new friends, you can do it. I believe in you. Um, and I will see you for part two for uh, the actual like how to of making new friends. So if you like the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel. We do talk about stuff like this and we also do a cute pop culture moment. So I'd love to have you stay for that uh, and share the video to help the channel grow and to help each other grow. And I will see you guys next Saturday. Okay, bye.